Hey now. Yeah, this is food. Monday, the 14th of October, I'm going to keep talking to you. Um, I decided to um, have a listen to this after I pulled it and couldn't remember it. It's on, actually it's on right now. And this is just beautiful. You know, this particular part here, I'm going to take it off just in case there's a copyright thing. You know that um, copyright blocking bullshit still happens. I was just informed that a video I put up in 2012 was recently blocked because of some music. <sighs> Ridiculous. Like somebody's really losing money because I'm sharing their music <laughs> with the world. Pathetic. But the Eddie Prevost... Quartet with Larry Stabbins, Marcio Matos, and Varian Weston. You know, I can liken some of the movement of the music like seeing something emerging from the earth and rolling forward as it gathers momentum. Really, a, a beautiful organic motion. I love stuff like this. I really do. Uh, no preparation for this video. I just, um, and it's like almost 10 o'clock, so I kind of slept in. That's kind of sleeping in for me to get up. I just got up at 9.30. Traditionally in America, it's been called Columbus Day, but for those of us that have, who have awakened to the lies of history, we're definitely, um, we're, and I know I'm not the only one, we're, we're, renaming the day National Indigenous People Day <clears throat> to um, honor those who were slaughtered so that an asshole like Trump could be president today. I will not mince words about how I feel about things, you know. History is such a, such a lie. Such a lie. And that's again why the far right are so, I'm not left, but it's the far right that who use that shit. The country and make America proud. You know, your your sense of history is a, is a complete lie, people. Almost everything that they do is not based on facts. I want to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a poll or show some records, sure. But um, here's something else that's on my mind. You know, yesterday um, I watched a couple of videos by some psychiatrists, doctors online. And my background is psychiatry. Um if I turned in my credits, like I said, I would have enough possibly for a master's or close. I'm beyond a bachelor's. So that I almost had when I quit college because I just, I love learning. I hate school. I mean, I hate kissing professors' butts, which is a lot of what you do. But I was watching some videos on narcissism and, um, and, um, couple were good, real good, because again, I have the background. I can read DSMs and medical um, books. I can read them. I can understand them. And they were talking about some of the subtle differences between someone who is a narcissist or the next phase sociopath or a psychopath. And I got to say this from my perspective. We have a president who is, um, it shows signs of all three, which is really sad because no matter where you, you cut it if you have a sick man leading you everyone following him is by default saying well we're sick too or we're too stupid to see that we're being followed we're being led by a sick son of a bitch and um there's no way something good can come out of it except on the other side <clears throat> you know when it all comes completely apart and we have to start over but, you know, a sociopath is someone who has no feelings, you know, no regard for others. We go to the next step, you know, and a sociopath is someone who is cunning, scheming, you know, dangerous, in my opinion, can be dangerous. And then you go to the psychopath, and that's where you get into predators and stuff. And you, we know you, the word predator takes, <clears throat> okay, 
Do we see all of those? Do I see all of those qualities in this fool that we have as a president? God damn straight I do. And any of you that are unable to see it, that's a damn shame, okay? Damn shame. This is bugging me where it's at. Now it's going to bug me even more. So <laughs> I've been kind of putting it over here to help with the light, but today it's like, it seems like there's enough light. Um, someone asked me about quintessence. I only have one of their albums. I don't have the beautiful one that folds out. Can I grab it right quick? Yeah, I have quintessence. There are a lot of records I don't have. But when it comes to the, the past and the history of rock music in particular, um, I might be checking things out. I don't particularly care for this. It's real hippie trippy. I love the word hippie, but it's these guys doing a rock jam thing with uh, Eastern influences. And it's um, more like, well, if we were there at the time with them grooving with them, it would be fun. But this is not a fun listen, but it's a definite keeper an absolute keeper. Of the records that are sitting down here that I may have shown, the only other one that I played recently, because I said, well, let me just play this. And I love it, is the nice. Uh, part of this is live. And um, this is back in the, the innocent days of just showing off. You know what I'm saying? Everybody takes a big, long, honking solo. And everybody loves it, you know, because it's still fresh. I mean, we'd still stand to listen to drum solos. Well, not stand. They were still new to us, you know. Good album. Lee Jackson and the drummer, um, Brian Davidson. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. You know, um, there's records I think, well, hey, let me show this and talk about this, then I'll forget it, you know. So here, here we go with a poll. And I'm going to go over here because I haven't been to this part here. A couple parts here I want to go to. Let me go... Don't look. I sort of know what's over here, but I don't want to look, but I want to get here. Okay, so I'm in this section, and what is it? Tom York. It's the, you know, the end of my, um, the end of my uh, alphabet. The Eraser. Really like this album, and uh, I like Tom York. Watched him recently on uh, some late night TV show giving an interview. Really would, I'd love to meet him. I, I, you know, he's just a total nerd. Not like me, but the kind of person I can relate to. That's something else I'll say, you know. Maybe too much information, I don't particularly care. Another thing that's come back, come up on the um, radar of people is the whole notion of Asperger's. Partially to do with Greta coming over here and uh, raising concerns. I'll agree that the lady, the young lady to some degree is probably being exploited, but she's real. You know, what she did at home, you know, because she's pretty concrete about climate change, you know, it's, it's real. Are people exploiting her? Probably by now. But the more I look in Asperger's, I realize I'm on that, I'm somewhere on the Asperger's scale. When I was a kid, and I've told this story before, I'm going to use a non- politically correct term because it was a term that I heard when I was a kid. When I was very young, up until about seven years old, I was treated like a retard. That's the word they used when I was a little boy, not developmentally disabled. But people thought I was a space case or some or slow or some kind of shit. Now I can still remember exactly the day and the moment in second grade, I was in second grade when I finally, when it finally dawned on me what the hell was going on around me, that people thought I wasn't right. They thought that I was, something was wrong with me because I was interacting with the world from my world, the way I saw it, you know, I was a bit of a spacey kid, you know, and, um, and then I thought to myself, oh, I guess I got to show these people some things so they'll leave me alone. So that's, that's the beginning of me understanding that I was different. But the other thing I'll share as to why I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm somewhere on the Asperger's um, scale is up until my, into my 20s, 
inside, I would literally have to watch other adults. Like, for example, when I got the job that I retired from at Community Alliance as a um, mental health rehabilitation specialist, it was like I had gone from the job that I got going from my teens into my 20s, and now this is like, well, this is my real first real adult job. And I had to look and watch the other adults around me for a while to see how they were responding to things and doing things because there were and still are a lot of things that so-called normal people do that don't make any sense to me. But I know how to do them. So people will leave me the hell alone. So um, I was digging on that. You know, I rather, I've always liked myself. Well, I mean, deep inside. Anyway, more info on me. So, frankly, I'm proud to not be just a typical, not typical. What's the other record I pulled? Beth York, Transformations. This is something I'd have to play again, but I kept it because it's, not exactly New Age, but it's probably in the New Age category. Last time I played this, this was good. Now, recently, I pulled a record from over here that was on the Lifestyles label, which I said was a keeper compared to the ones that I'd gotten rid of. Then I played it again fresh for the first time, and it's like, no, it's not a keeper. It was like it was pretty bland. It was like, hmm, I guess I, I was hoping that at some point it would get good, but it was like, oh, that one's gone. It's it's out of here. This is good. This is how I wake up every day. Okay. I want to go here again. Um, there's stuff over here. I'll take a few here. Eberhard Weber. See, I'm real familiar. I'm over here in my W's and stuff. Eberhard Weber bassist. He's European, but I forget. Is he Norwegian? Is he Swedish? I forget. I just absolutely adore his playing. And he, I think he's Norwegian. I know he goes way back with Terry Riptol later that evening. I have not heard a bad Eberhard Weber album. This one is just um, a masterpiece. Here we're in Desert Island. This is in the top 100 for sure. The Colors of Chloe. This is gorgeous. The cover painting is perfect for the sound of this album. Wonderful. Next record. Music Visions by Reynold Widenar and Richard Brooks. And what we have here, it looks like this is... um something that maybe be associated with a school or something. Um, it's compositions by different people, be, these people being performed by ensembles. I know that this is good. The Widenar I think, is kind of outside, kind of out there. Music Visions. Next one, Weekend. Live at Ronnie Scott's. You all remember this band? What was her name? The singer? But this is cool. It's with Keith Tippett, who we know from all of his... He, British jazz pianist, who's ever worked with everyone. King Crimson, he's a part of Centipede. So many wonderful recordings. Um, Ju Ke Julie Tippett, her husband. Haven't played this in a while, but uh, this band was happening, was it in the 80s? Allison Statton. Allison Statton's a name, yeah. You know their, their work. Or find out. I think you will like it. Soft, j jazzy kind of sound. Yeah, I hadn't been over there. And down here, I'm just going to just show, because I know what it is, but here's somebody that I love. No, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I'm just have to look, okay? I want to show them. I want to just show a couple how much I love Neil Young. Love Neil Young. I've seen him live three times. Would would love to have met him even now. You know, we're all getting old, so it hardly... Ooh, 
Did you hear what I was about to say? It still matters. But Neil Young, first song I ever played, learned on the guitar was Heart of Gold. He's very important to me. Now, this is one of the, this is in my Neil Young section, his band Crazy Horse. I've got their first solo album. Don't really care for this, but it's like, this was given to me by an old friend who said, you know, you know, you, this belongs in your collection. I keep it for that reason. On the beach. Yeah. And here's one that I've played to death after the gold rush. And Southern Man, absolutely. I appreciate Neil Young writing that song. And that's why when I get pissed off, I do literally get pissed off the, the amount of times I hear in Omaha, Nebraska, the Leonard Skinner song, Sweet Home Alabama. It just drives home the subtle racist nature of this part of the country. And people, I recently said something about it online and people wanted to have a shit pit about it on both sides, you know, mostly from people who just don't see it. Well, it's a good song. They said, well, I hope Neil Young will remember a Southern man don't need him around. Well, you know what they're talking about, okay? That's racist. Fuck you, all that stuff. Racist, 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 redneck, red-ass fucking Nebraska. My home. If you don't like it, we ain't fucking leave it. See how stupid that shit sounds? Neil Young. American Stars and Bars. Here's one I don't play much, but I got it. You know what I'm saying? Love Neil Young. Okay. Back in here is so well known. So well known. So well known to me. But we'll try and pull and see if we get something you haven't heard. And we sure have. Harumi. A double album came out at the end of the 60s, maybe 1970, on the Verve Folkways record. Record label. Supposedly, the band is the Mothers of Invention backing him up. They're not credited. The musicianship is good enough that it could be. This record is cool. Um, it's It goes from sight, it goes from pop and radio hopeful tunes to psychedelic freakouts, literally. This is way cool. Now, when I met Jimmy Carl Black of the Mothers of Invention... I asked him about this record because we had a chance to sit down and talk for a while. And he said, you know, it's really possible. I even showed him the picture on the back because I was going to have him sign it. But since he couldn't remember, he, I wouldn't have him sign it. And we tried to look and see could we, if we could place him in this picture on the back. And we cannot. And so he said, I may be on this album, but I don't remember. But this is a cool one. Harumi. Harumi. Next up, we have a 12-inch that I've kept. David Harrell, I believe, came to my attention through Cabaret Voltaire. David Harrell, Our Little Girl. Kind of a, an electronic thing. This is, this is a keeper. It's a, what do they call them, a banger? Maybe I'm using um, slang incorrectly, but I'm using it the way that it is in my head. See, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really care if I'm... See? This is really good. I call it a banger. Because it's just, it's got a really heavy beat, and what he's doing on it is really strong. And even though it sounds a little dated, I wish I could play these for you guys. I, I wish I could. This holds up. This is real good. I'm going to do one more, keep it short. Whew, Billy Hart, Enchant, Billy Hart, jazz drummer who again came to my attention through Herbie Hancock. This is a solo album of his. And this is a, a wonderful album. Um, there's a spiritual jazz aspect of this one, as well as a real hard driving. It just, this is a fantastic album. Fan-freaking-tastic. Last thing I'll share is I was over here and uh, noticed... I can notice, get it, pull it again. It was a particular one. Yeah. I happened to go over there and dip into my um, test pressing box 
and I, I forget my work. I um, make these collages uh, mostly out of uh, magazines, stuff I cut out of magazines and stuff. And here is one that caught my eye. I said, oh, that's, well, that's a good one. This is uh, one of my one-of-a-kind collages made for my test pressings. Isn't that nice? This one came out good. And here's another one. Maybe, yeah, I like this one. The Symmetry. This is, this is one for the, a test printing for Derek 2. These are kind of like children to me, you know, even though I have the actual records. The test pressings have a lot of value to me. That's why I don't... A few folks have some test pressings who helped me put out Murphy. It was part of the... Uh, the fund me plan, you know, you give certain, a certain amount of money and you get a individual test pressing with a collage. So some of the people have these besides the art pieces that I've sold that are framed. Um, you know, I'm not interested in selling these, but like anyone, you know, money is needed. So if anyone wants to own these and feels like spending money, just get a hold of me. I've got a bunch. But it also made me think that um, hmm, I just might go to a thrift store today or to uh, Recycled Sounds where he's got a lot of junk. And I hadn't done this in a while. And get some junk record covers. And because I've still got a bunch of test pressings that are uncovered as a result of selling those uh, collages. And, and make some new ones. Might be, might be time to do that. You all have a great day, evening, whenever you see this. It's important to be genuine. I hate phony motherfucking people. I hate it.